Picking up where we left off, we are on number 2b. So I'm going to go ahead and start to combine some like terms here. I have a lot going on in this problem, so I just need to simplify each side separately first. So I'm going to combine my 4y and my 6y. Negative 6y, which gives me negative 2y minus 9, is equal to, I'm going to distribute the 2 on the left hand or right hand side, which gives me 2y plus 10 minus 3. From there, I need to combine my 10 and my 3. It gives me negative 2y minus 9 is equal to a 2y plus 7. From there, I'm going to go ahead and get my y's all on the same side and get those combined together. So I'm going to add the 2y from the left to the right. i will cancel out on the left-hand side. It gives me negative 9 is equal to 4y plus 7. If I then subtract 7 on both sides, I'm getting a little cramped for space here, so I'm up to the side. Negative 16 is equal to the 4y, and I can divide by 4 and divide by 4, and y is equal to a negative 4. Make sure you get the negative in there. With all of these problems, if you would like, you can check these. So I can take my y here, and I could plug it back in for all of my y's. Simplify each side separately, and as long as I get the same thing, I know that I do have a correct answer. Let's move on then to identity and contradiction. So identity and contradiction are two words that we're going to use. Um, you're actually familiar with some different words that mean these same things, and we're going to actually use those ones more. Um, but we'll go ahead and start with the definitions and then talk about what those other words and phrases are. So an identity is going to be an equation that is true for all values meaning that no matter what I plug into that equation, it is always going to be true. What we called that before back in Algebra 1 was infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions. Okay, And that's the phrase that we're going to use most often is infinitely many solutions. Okay, Now, what we're going to see when we get an answer like that is going to be something where I have x is equal to x. I, or I might have it with numbers. I might have 3 is equal to 3. Either way, I'm going to get a statement that's very simple and I can see is always going to be true. With x is equal to x, no matter what I plug in for x on one side, I'm going to plug the same thing in on the other side, and that's always going to be equal. So we're always going to have equal pieces there. Contradiction is basically the opposite of that. So if identity is always true, then a contradiction is never true. So this is an equation with no values. that make it true. And the phrase that we used for that one back in Algebra 1 was no solution because there is not a solution to it. There's no number that I can plug in to make that work. This is going to look very similar to an identity in the fact that we're going to get down to just two numbers that are equal to each other. <laughs> Different that they're, they're not going to equal each other. So I might have something like 10 equals 2, which is obviously not true. 10 does not equal 2. So that statement is always going to be false. And no matter what I plugged into the equation that gave me that, I'm going to still get a wrong answer. I'm not going to get a true solution. So. That being said, let's take a look at example three. Now that we've introduced identity any contradiction, what these two are going to be. But the first point I want to make here is that looking at number three versus any of the examples in number two, you can't tell that it's going to be an infinitely many or no solutions just by looking at it. We have to start to solve it. Then eventually things are going to start to look very similar on each side. And then we have to work through and see are they actually going to be equal or do I have that contradiction of things that are not equal. So for A here, for number three, I'm going to go ahead and combine my R's together first. So I have an r and a negative 5r gives me negative 4r plus 8. That is going to equal if I distribute on the right hand side 2 times 4, which is 8. 2 times a negative 2 gives me a negative 4. <coughs> Excuse me. And we can go ahead and keep going from there. So I'm going to get my r's together. That's my next step is to combine my r's together. So I'm going to add 4r to both sides. And what happens there is I actually cancel on both sides. Once I cancel on both sides, then I'm left with 8 is equal to 8, which is a true statement. So I'm comfortable saying then that this statement is going to always be true, this equation, so I can say that I have infinitely many solutions. Then for part B, I'm going to do the same thing. I just have to distribute on both sides here to start. So I'm going to distribute my negative 4 through, which gives me negative 8m plus a negative 28, or minus 28, either one is fine. If I distribute 1 half through, 1 half of 6 is 3. Minus 1 half of 8 is going to be a negative 8m. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and keep going from there. So I need to get my 8Ms together. So I'm going to add the 8M to both sides because it is negative to start. Once I do that, I get negative 28 is equal to 3, which is not true. That is not a true statement. So I say here that my answer is no solution. I do not have any solutions to that problem. Okay, so hopefully you remember those. Again, if it's true, we say infinitely many. If it's false, we say no solution. Next piece here is going to be our inequality. So this is the part that's going to be a little bit new. We talked about this very briefly last year, but we need to make sure we hit on it a little bit more. So an inequality is still going to be a mathematical statement. So this is still going to be a statement that's comparing two expressions. The difference being that I'm not going to use an equal sign. So an inequality really is going to be anything that uses a symbol other than our equals. Okay, so this compares two expressions. by using the symbols. We're going to list out all of our different symbols we can use. So we could use a less than, we can use a greater than. I also have my versions with the equal to, so less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. The one that a lot of people will forget about is we also could have not equals. We don't see that one a ton, but it's technically one possibilities for our inequalities. When it comes to solving inequalities, this is what we're going to do in our next part here. We have to be very careful. We have to be very careful about what we're doing here. So when we're solving inequalities, we need to make sure that we are solving these the same way as equations. So we solve them the same as equations. The only difference being that if we do one particular thing, we have to change something. So if you multiply or divide by a negative number, if you do one of those two things, then you must reverse or sometimes we'll use the word flip the inequality symbol. And what we mean by reverse it is if I have a less than, that's going to become a greater than, or a greater than would be a less than. Less than or equal to, we become greater than or equal to. Not equal doesn't really flip around. That's the one that we don't actually have to worry about that negative with. Okay, but a couple helpful hints here. We're going to have four of these, so make sure you give yourself enough room. First one is going to be this exact same we just wrote. We need to write it again just so that it's in our brains that we always flip our inequality or flip the sign if you multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, so if you if you multiply by a negative number, you have to make sure you flip that sign. And really, that's what we said right above this. We just need to make sure we're remembering that. Okay, the other reminders I want to give you here is that when we graph these, because that will be part of these questions, is to solve it and then graph. You graph on number lines. So just in one dimension, you don't need our x, y axis. We just need one dimension there. And when we are graphing, there are two things that we need to remember. And it's what we actually put on the graph, whether it's an open dot or a closed dot. So we will use closed dots for any inequality that includes an equal to, less than or greater than or equal to. And we'll use open dots. if it does not have an equal to, so there's no equal to. So that's just our less than or greater than or really not equal to is an open circle as well. Okay, so those are going to be our graphs when we start to get there. We'll use open dots and closed dots. We'll talk through those in our first examples here in number four. So let's go ahead and start to take a look at these. For example four, I need to start by solving out my uh, a here. To do that, I need to get my Q's on the same side. Now, it's going to be really important when we're doing this that we're very careful about our signs and our negatives because if I have that negative that I multiply or divide by, I have to flip my sign. So I'm going to actually try and avoid negatives as much as possible. Then I don't have to worry about that sign piece. So I'm going to actually subtract my 3Q here because that will make sure that my Q's stay positive. So this is going to be 12 is greater than 9, or sorry, 6Q. 9 minus 3 is 6, minus 18. Then I'll go ahead and add my 18 to both sides. 
which then gives me 30 is less than or greater than 6q. And if I want to get q by itself, I divide by 6 on both sides. And then I have 5 is greater than q. Now, it's really important to make sure you keep your order of things in the correct place here. I don't want to move q to the other side right now. Otherwise, I'm going to get my symbol all mixed up. Now, I can move q to the other side. And I can rearrange this whole thing. But if I do, I'm really going to pivot around this inequality symbol. So my less than or my smaller side of it is actually pointing towards my q. So that needs to still be the case. Which really I'm switching that inequality, and now I put the 5 on the other side, which is really staying the same relationship. If I'm saying 5 is greater than Q, then Q is less than 5, and that should make sense. So on my number line here, these number lines do not have to be super amazing, fantastic, perfect things all the time. Really, I need three numbers on there to tell me where you're at on the number line, and then from there, you just need to get your graph on there. So I always put the number we're concerned with in the middle, so that's where I'm going to put my 5. Then I need a number to the left and a number to the right. So easiest is just to go one over. So one over to the left is going to be one less, which is four. One up is six. Then I need to get my graph on here. Now these ones do not have equal to. So if I go up to my reminders right up here at the top, we say an open dot for without the equals. So I put an open dot at five. And then I'm going to put an arrow in the direction of the inequality. So this one is less than. So I want to include everything that goes to the left of five. And that's my graph. That's my graphing inequalities. We can go ahead and do the same thing for part B. I need to get my x by itself. Now, here I'm naturally not going to be able to avoid that negative because if I subtract 1 on both sides, I get negative 2x is greater than, sorry, I'm going to equal sign, greater than 21. Oh, wow, 20, not 21, just 20. Then I'll divide by a negative 2. And that right there is the step I have to be very careful of. I just divided by a negative on both sides. Okay? When I do that, I now need to switch my inequality and my 20 becomes a negative 10. So x is now less than negative 10. That is my final answer, so I can go ahead and graph that. That's going to be negative 10 right there in the middle. On the left and on the right is a little bit tricky when we go into the negative. So I know that to the left of negative 10 is more negative, which means that's a negative 11. And to the right is going to be less negative, which is closer to 0. So negative 9 goes to the right. Okay. From there, I can go ahead and draw in my dot. So I put in my dot at negative 10, and I need to decide, am I going less than or greater than? Well, I'm less than here, so I'm going to the left to my numbers that are more negative. All right, last one here, part C. So we're going to go ahead and combine our like terms on the left-hand side. So I have a 5x and a negative 2 gives me 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 7x plus 5. Once I do that, I can go ahead and subtract 3x on both sides. That gives me 2 is less than or equal to 4x plus 5. And I'll subtract 5 on both sides. Oh, I'm sorry here. I missed a number up here. So negative 5 and 2 gives me a negative 3. So I need the negative 3 in here. This is a negative 3. When I do that, I then get negative 8 is less than or equal to 4x. Divide by my 4 on both sides. And I get that negative 2 is less than or equal to x. Or I could say that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. So I put negative 2 in the middle of my graph, negative 3 on one side, negative 1 on the other. This one is a, one is a SOT because I'm equal to, and I'm headed off to the right. Okay, and that's the end of our notes for today.